Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Mark Hanrahan. Welcome everyone. I'm Whitney Ward. After their dominant win last night, the Zags now turn their attention to a Baylor squad hoping to play spoiler. Brenna Green is in Salt Lake City tonight where she just got to catch up with the Zags on their off day. Earlier on in the week, we did a story with former Gonzaga walk on turned current Baylor grad assistant Rem Bacchamis. That story is online now at creme.com. But when we did that piece, it wasn't a for sure thing that Gonzaga and Baylor would meet up because they both needed to win on Thursday. Obviously, they did that before Baylor's game last night and after Gonzaga's win, Rem gave the Zags high fives in the tunnel. So there's definitely a lot of love between Rem and the team. He told me a few days ago that his first reaction when he saw that the Bears could take on Gonzaga was that he was scared because Gonzaga is that good. We checked in on how he's feeling today. Yeah, I just had this feeling it was going to shake out like this anyway. So uh, now that it's actually happening, um, it's a pretty weird feeling seeing him on the other side, but I'm enjoying it. It's going to be fun. Those are all my guys, you know, so I want to beat them. But at the end of the day, I still love them. I haven't done media in a long time, you know, but Gonzaga continues to make me relevant. Another thing he told us in that interview is that he was actually texting fellow Gonzaga walk on Jack Beach during the selection show and Beach predicted this matchup was going to happen. Naturally, we had to talk to Beach about that. We also had to talk to Rams former teammate Josh Perkins about facing off against him. Called it. We both kind of called it at the same time. Literally, I uh, sent uh, Baylor Syracuse is my guess, and then he right after said I agree, and it happened about two minutes later. What is it like knowing he's going to be on the opposite bench? Uh, I don't know, it's weird. I might have to go over and give him a handshake or something before the game. Um, I don't know how he's going to be able to root for either team, but I guess he has to root for Baylor now, so uh, good for him on that. But um, I don't know, it's going to be a lot of fun, Try a little, little trash talk. <laughs> I knew it was coming. Yep. Uh, it's big time, you know, one of my brothers. Um, him and Coach Jacobs, you know, so some familiar faces on the opposing side. Um, it'll be fun. It'll be fun to see me out there and um, just hopefully we come out of top tomorrow. Okay, but what about the Bears? Well, they made 16 threes against Syracuse's vaunted zone last night, so you know that they are certainly capable. We asked a few of the Zags to give us a scouting report on what to expect of Baylor come tomorrow afternoon. <laughs> um, I think they're a super physical team. Um, they've got some size and, and some um, athletes that we're going to have to deal with. That'll uh, probably be something we haven't seen, you know, lately since uh, WCC play started. But, um, you know, I think obviously that we, we see things that we're hoping to exploit and what they do defensively and what they do offensively. Um, but obviously a really talented team, you know, struggled to start the year a little bit, so they've been on a bit of a roll lately. And then, you know, winning the first game in the tournament always gives the people a bunch of confidence. So we're going to have to come out and, and, you know, give them our A game or, or, you know, we can find ourselves in trouble. I mean, they're a great team. They played really well yesterday. Um, a really well, good uh, three-point shooting team. And um, they're really going on the glass on the uh, offensive end. So, so uh, the key is going to be to, you know, uh, limit their threes and, um, and uh, bugs them out on the rebound. By the way, not only Rim on the opposing bench, but also former Gonzaga Director of Basketball Operations, John Jacobs. He's now an assistant coach on Baylor. Jacobs held that Director of Basketball Operations job during the 2017 national title game run. So he obviously has a lot of insight on Gonzaga's inner workings, and that is a huge help to this Bears team. Reporting in Salt Lake City, I'm Brenna Green, Crim2 Sports. Well, the Gonzaga women's basketball team also gearing up for their first round game of the NCAA tournament. The fifth seed Bulldogs will take on 12 seed Little Rock. That's tomorrow in Corvallis. This is video of them practicing today. GU is confident, but they'll be without two of their key players, Laura Stockton and Jill Townsend. Both were injured in the WC tournament. They play tomorrow at 1230 and you can watch the game on ESPN2. Well, former Lewis and Clark High School star Riley Lupfer and her school, Boise State, are in Gonzaga's region. The two teams could play in the second round if they both win their first round matchups. They were just one seat away from potentially playing one another in the first round. Nonetheless, Lupfer hopes both the Bulldogs and the Broncos can take care of business. She is excited about the possibility of playing her hometown college. We were just one seat away from playing on. That would have been fun, but hopefully we get the win and they get the win and uh, get to play on Monday. I've always respected their program. I love their head coach. Uh, I wish Laura was out there playing. I wish Jill was playing. And, uh, I feel bad for them that the seasons are over, but I think it would just be, uh, it would be really fun, be a competitive game. 
Loopfer and the 13 seed Broncos will play four seed Oregon State. That is tomorrow at 2.30. You can watch the game on ESPN2. As this one is from the Attorney General of Washington State, a verified account, which is serious. Hey, Jimmy Kimmel, as Attorney General of Washington State, I declare under penalty of perjury that Gonzaga U is real. All right, well, let's see you say it under oath. Uh, your hand on the Bible. Jimmy, thanks so much for responding to my tweet and issuing us a challenge. You asked us to swear on a stack of Bibles and put our hand in the air that Gonzaga University is real. We're going to do you one better. We've got some real Gonzaga University law students who are going to take the oath instead of us. Are you ready? Let's do this. <laughs> Hands in the air, everybody. We've got a real Bible, Jimmy. Here we go. I am a real student. I am a real student. With real student debt. With real student debt. At the very real Gonzaga Law School. At the very real Gonzaga Law School. I believe in Gonzaga. I believe in Gonzaga. <laughs> so just like that, the Jimmy Kimmel saga continues. After Kimmel tripled down last night on his theory that Gonzaga, not a real place, Attorney General Bob Ferguson made his own response today. In the meantime, we caught up with a GU student who created a petition to get Kimmel to speak at Gonzaga's commencement. By now, you've probably seen or heard this clip. I don't believe Gonzaga University exists. I think somebody made it up to recruit a basketball team. It sparked a bit of controversy on whether the small private school in Spokane is fictional. Apparently I opened a, a Spokane of worms because people in Spokane are angry because I outed them, I guess, with this ruse they've been selling. Today, students are doing things you'd expect to see on a college campus, studying, playing frisbee, and lounging in hammocks. Most know the host is just having some fun, but they say it's not the first time they've had to explain themselves. Then you have the people who are like, Gonzaga? Is that, is that a thing? Are you, are you by Seattle? And it just happens every time. A series of tweets are pouring in, inviting the comedian to visit Spokane, and now students are starting a petition to bring Kimmel to speak at commencement. It started out kind of a little bit as a joke, but um, we did actually think that we would get a lot of signatures. The late night host took it a step further last night and poked fun at Spike the Bulldog, and even made a parody of the school's admissions video. <laughs> Even their school song isn't real. This is ridiculous. The lengths they go to to convince us this school is real. While he might believe it's a mythical school, he did pick the Zags to win it all. Students hope he's right about their team and finds out they are more than just basketball. It would be cool if he came to Gonzaga and just to kind of eat his words to show that we do exist. We also just learned they are 45 signatures away from their goal on that petition. Side note, I want to be on a college campus in a hammock. Just Doesn't hanging everybody? out on a Friday, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. It's a sad update tonight. The last known herd of wild caribou in the lower 48 is officially gone. Yeah, that means the species as we've known it here in the U.S. is extinct. The Selkirk herd was down to one lone female this winter. So wildlife officials trapped and relocated her to a pen in Canada because they say she just would not have survived the winter. Now she's going to be released into a nearby herd in Canada. The Kalispell tribe's been working hard for years to protect the Selkirk caribou, which used to roam through Washington and Idaho and Canada. Tonight, the director of wildlife resources sent me a statement saying, while it seems that the last Selkirk Mountain caribou has been lost to the Pacific Northwest and the entire U.S., this important part of our shared natural heritage is far from gone. He said our interest and intent is to see them return to their southern range once again. Hmm. Well, he is a man behind one of the Northwest's most heinous crimes. Today, a federal court judge denied convicted serial killer Joseph Duncan's request to vacate his three death sentences. Duncan was sentenced to multiple life sentences back in 2008 for killing Brenda Groney, her son Dylan, and her boyfriend. He is also sentenced to serve 120 months for kidnapping Shasta Groney in 2005. So Duncan had 12 challenges for his convictions, claiming errors during the trial process deprived him of due process. Today, though, the judge said all but one of Duncan's claims are without merit. Two of his three life sentences were then upheld.
All right, weather now. Always exciting to have weather like we've seen this past week for something even more exciting in store for the Inland Northwest tonight. Yeah, this is really cool. It's actually one of the rare times we might actually be able to see the northern lights right here at home. So meteorologist Thomas Patrick is in the Weather Center with details on how you might be able to see it tonight. Hi, Thomas. Hey, yeah, a phenomenon that usually only happens in northern Alaska on a daily basis is possible in Washington State tonight. That, of course, being the northern lights. Kind of a one-off deal, though. So tonight is is your only chance to see it, but Spokane is in the right place at the right time, as are many other cities in the northern tier of the US. We're in that green area where the best chance to see it is. Now, of course, you're going to have to go outside the city, get away from those city lights and maybe get away from some of the cloud cover. That at least gives you the best chance to see it for tonight. So, of course, we'll have to monitor where, of course, the Aurora Borealis will materialize for this evening. As for the rest of your forecast, increasing clouds tonight, giving way to a cloudy day for tomorrow. There is a slight chance for showers on Saturday, and when we look at Doppler radar, most of Washington is seeing the cloud cover at the moment as this next storm system is just starting to make its way across Washington, but it's a slow start at first. There's not a whole lot of rain, at least not just yet. So I'll go in more detail about the uh, Aurora Borealis or Northern Lights, as well as when rain is most likely this upcoming weekend. A forecast you won't want to miss coming up in a few minutes. Sounds good, Thomas. Thank you very much. After nearly two years, Special Counsel Robert Mueller has completed his investigation into Russian interference in the 2016 presidential election. So while he's not recommending any new indictments in that report, it's expected to launch a fresh wave of political battles over this still confidential findings. So the letter went to members of the Senate and House Judiciary Committees. Here's the thing, though, it could still be a while before any of us learn what that report actually says. Attorney General William Barr will now send a summary of that report to Congress. That could happen as soon as this weekend. My goal and intent is to get as much information out as I can, Thank consistent you. with the regulation. Barr has the authority to decide which parts of the report will be revealed to the public. It's possible he may decide not to release anything. We will keep you updated with all the details in this case.